Alrighty, welcome back fellers and non-fellers. We're here with the Barely Cuda again. I know, we're staying pretty focused on this one because somebody really wants to hear this thing fire up. That'd be me. So, engine's all bolted in, which you saw in the last video, or whichever video it's going to be. I get confused sometimes. We have the intake tanks. Wind, how dare you? I do apologize about the wind noise. I'm trying to cover the microphone up. So please bear with me on that one. So everything's cleaned up there. We got our 660s off. We're gonna start making fuel lines for these as soon as all that stuff shows up. I went ahead and made a regulator mount. Now I know this is an expensive regulator, 100 bucks on eBay, brand new. Stay on eBay, find good deals. So I got the blower all cleaned up and uh, got the gas gasket services cleaned up. We have our linkage kit from uh, Enderly which you can buy these kits if you look on eBay for about 130 bucks to 150 bucks, depending on what you need. That's where I buy all my linkage kits from. And this one actually came with pictures, for people who need pictures. We have our SEE gasket here for blower to carb adapter because we're not gonna use the one from Speedmaster. It's bad enough we already have a Speedmaster part on this engine. We have our Mr. Gasket blower gasket there to the manifold. That came from Jags. Well, actually, both those came from Jags. And uh, I got to set up the linkage and get the blower actually bolted on, done, permanent, so that way I can actually start to make the fuel lines once all that stuff shows up. That'll all be A in. And that's on the way, because believe it or not, I don't have all the A in fittings I need. So that's on the way. Now, let's go make some stuff happen. Well, I was going to film all this, you know, on the little tripod, but like I said, couple times ago I broke my actual phone mount so I had the GoPro thing there and I put a piece of bailing wire around it and I realized well you guys don't need to be watching me put these studs in well studs are on don't mind some of these stick up taller than the others when they put Hela coils in some of these holes they didn't put them in a hundred percent right they don't line up with the threads they left I don't know why they did it the way they did it but uh, yeah some of the studs don't go all the way through like they should but they do get great engagement. There's no wiggle to them once they're set down in there. Uh, we got our Enderly blower attachment right here and everything tightened up real nice. I only used my little baby half inch 12 point here. I'll come back through with the uh, speed wrench and just double check everything. But now I'm gonna start setting up uh, blower linkage and all that stuff. I'm gonna lube up the little roller wheels right there on the 660s. That's real critical to have those lubed up. So that way they spin nice. We'll get our SCE gasket out. We'll get it bolted down here with the adapter. I'll get that cleaned up because it fell. And uh, it'll actually be a blown 440 for real. Okay, so I just went through the primary 660 where 76 is on the jet squared, all four corners, zero power valves. This has the correct metering blocks, the secondary side that have it blocked off completely permanent it's in the casting. Everything worked out pretty good. The uh, return spring right here was actually knocked off, so put that back on and now it opens and shuts on its own like it should. Everything looks pretty good. I changed out the rear float bowl. The dude I got these from was very knowledgeable in Holly carburetor, so I'm not doubting his uh, deal, but when he put these uh, center hung style slash cathedral bowls on here, he made this block off plate because these are off a double pumper. And on a double pumper, that well is opened up yeah, these are kind of dirty inside. Carburetors were clean. But uh, he made a gasket and he said this worked. Um, I'm not doubting him, but I do have an extra pair of non-double pumper rear float bowls that are uh, center hung. I'm going to use these instead. Just I'm not going to take any chances. So I'm going to get this one kind of pour, pour apart, make sure the jets are the same in it, make sure they're both the same. Clean them up just a little bit. And then they'll be going on the Barely Cuda. Alrighty, well we went through the carburetors. We uh, got both the float bowls changed out. Double check float heights. Everything's good. It's 76 on all four sides. Hi Anna. And uh, getting ready to do mock-up. Got these extra long studs in here. We'll be uh, changing those out for sure. And uh, ow, beard got stuck in my shirt again. So we're going to start setting up this linkage. We're going to get our regulator back on. Hello, Lee. Goodbye, Lee. Yep, that's what we're doing right now. Okay. All right, so we're kind of going to teach Anna this. We're not super focused on teaching you guys because you guys are way smarter. <laughs> oh, thanks. Then Anna and I both combined. <laughs> that's the reason why you're watching the video and we're making the video. 
Yeah, totally. So, nice handily Enderly sends you this piece of paper. Normally you don't get this piece of paper. Normally you get a black and white printout from the 70s that's a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. You might want to speed this up. It's, it's pretty crap. So this time we got a full color one. Um, however, just to be perfectly honest with you, you take this thing, you do this number, and you do this number, and you put it in your pocket. You never look at it again. And you button your pocket so that way it's a real pain in the butt to get out. You don't need that. You're smarter now. You don't need the instructions. What you do is you take all this stuff here they give you in this kit. Oh, there's another set I was looking for. And uh, this is called your bell crank. This is your bracket with a thing on it, and this is your thing without a bracket on it. These are your doohickeys. This is your spinny doohickey. And these are your clampy oni doohickeys. Are those technical terms? Those are scientific terms. Scientific terms. Oh, wow. So this doohickey, the, the bell cranky doohickey, see you got these holes? You can either put it here, or you can put it here. And the idea is you want this kind of in the center. Yeah. That's not the center. No, neither, none of those work for the center. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, This is going to go so well. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. So these, this is just like setting up a tunnel ram wagon like what's on Jezebel. So this goes there, and then you have your mate to it. You want to make sure these are, so these go on like this. They sit down, and then you screw these in underneath, and this can set your height. And I always set these up to where they're as tall as possible out of the way, because you don't really want your linkage hanging down. Just like you don't want your... If you're a guy, you know where I'm at. <laughs> like I said, it's windy today. So yeah, you don't want these hanging down real low, just like if you're a dude, you don't want your nads hanging down real low, right? Right, Anna? Well, I'm not a dude, so I have no idea. You're not? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so those go there. And this rod, it's got a short spline on this end and a long spline on this end. And raising a deduction, you're going to have more stuff going on on this side so it's going to pretty much sit like that and it runs in that hind joint and then you run a couple of nuts down on this to tighten it down and of course over here and you use these two hickeys right here and these are splined here that match this spline and they actually clamp on with this and then that guy goes on there it'll connect in there with a pushing and that's basically your setup and the idea is you want to make sure that everything is exactly the same because you want both carburetors to operate at the exact same time. No progressive. Progressive is weak. And here, we're all about small PP energy. So, I'm going to set this stuff up and we'll show you when that's done. Okay, so the linkage is roughed in right now. And there's our angle. Now, here's what's important. You know, this is our arm that's going to connect down to here once we get the timing right. You want to make sure everything opens together. Make sure these rods are all kind of in line as best as possible. And you want everything to move smoothly. Forward to just so I don't do these every day, but it's nice to have a couple of cars set up with this linkage. So you can see the Jezebel's arms are just a little more in line. Now, this side of it's a little bit different. We'll end up with, we actually have our linkage pulling from the outside instead of like where they're Dumb structures have it pulling from the inside. That'll solve a lot of issues. All right, back to the Barracuda. <laughs> what? What? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the more difficult linkages having to set up. Not fun. Anna, I'm about to blow you another kiss. No, that's gross. There you go. You're gross. You can keep your butt kiss. Ooh. Alrighty, so I just want to show you just a little bit of oil goes a long ways. Even go part throttle all the way. A little bit of oil. And that's how you want your tunnel ram or boiler linkage to work. It needs to be smooth, crisp, everything functions. 
Still not a big fan of the angle this guy gets at, but that's the best I could get it. So luckily our cable, putting it in the forward position here, we'll build a little bracket that'll hold this down, clamp it right there. And this thing fully extended, it'll actually connect right on there, which I can actually take this lever and move it up a little bit if I need it to be out there, if I need to build an adapter bracket, but that'll work out perfectly. Then we'll just need return springs, We'll call throttle done we actually spaced the whole linkage down so that way our fuel lines can shoot out and hopefully it don't get too close that might be a problem because uh, we're going to fuel line running here and then a fuel line running here to connect into the regulator in the back so i'll see you guys when all that stuff shows up okay and we're back everybody man my hair is getting long holy crap anyways uh we got a big package from jigs pretty freaking sweet we got that's supposed to be two of those i think in there oh well We'll go through all this, but we got gauges, gauge panels, we got a tachometer. Yeah, I know, we went, we went silly with the tach. Let's see, we got spacers, because the spacers on the carburetors aren't going to be working for this setup. We got a bunch of the nylon braided hose, which I personally prefer, helmet hook, bunch of fittings, all the AN stuff. I'm going to need to build out the entire fuel system. Big filter there. Uh, gauge panel for two and five eighths gauges, a couple of carb caps, a hat, because everybody needs a good hat, uh, carb studs. We got a whole bunch of crap in here to be able to plumb this fuel system from the regulator to the carburetors, from the regulator all the way to the back. Now, it'll be coming off the regulator AN and it'll adapt into a half inch aluminum or copper nickel line that'll run the length underneath the car till it gets to the fuel cell where it'll or well before it gets to like the fuel filter fuel pump all that stuff that'll all be a in to the fuel cell in the trunk so i'm going to get to work because this is going to be a lot of work getting all these lines made the way i want them because i'm very meticulous very ocd about my fuel lines but also check this out after the big rainstorm last night there's still water sitting in that trough I had to cut, but just when your linkage is right, it should be like that. Nice and smooth. Okay. Well, I'm going to get to work on this. I'll give you guys a little subtle updates as I go and uh, wish me luck and hopefully everything goes smooth. All right. Well, I've been working on trying to figure out this conundrum. As it turns out, our linkage likes to run right exactly where I wanted that fuel line to be. We clear it. Even with the cap on there, that's an Earl's Tight 45. We'll have to get another one of those for the other side so it matches. I like symmetry, and I don't like taking the easy way out with just double pumper lines hanging out the other side. I like symmetry, and with this regulator, we'll be able to have that. It's just going to take some brain power, and I don't mind exercising the old brain. Isn't that right, Anna? Yeah, sure. Doing things the hard way, right? Totally. Well, I'm dating you, so. What does that mean? You guys don't know. You guys have no idea. Wow. Anyway, so this line needs to go here, and this line needs to go here. This is going to be a real short guy right there. So I'm going to get some hose out, measure that up, and see if I can get that guy made, because then that will help me tell where this one ends up needs to be to get to this guy and make sure it clears this linkage. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to make the rest of our A in line. Let me show you what we got. We got a little bit of break in the wind today. We got our two back ones done. They're real short, real tight. We got that guy done. It clears the linkage good. So we got this all marked out here for you. And uh, a lot of guys will use bolt cutters. I normally use the chop saw, but here recently I've been using just my little die grinder, air powered die grinder, and I'll tape one end. Hang on. I'll put my tape right there. So we need to cut in between these two pieces of tape. So this gives me a piece of tape. So it doesn't fray on my end where I'm going to put my fitting. And this keeps this from fraying for the next fitting. So I'm going to cut that. We'll start making our lines and we'll show you how we do that. Alrighty, so we got a little piece of hose here. And what I do is I blow that out real good. And make sure we can see through it, which it's curved so we can't. But out in the sunlight, make sure it's clear of any obstructions. Then we just assemble our two fittings. And then we got to cram this guy over the tape. What I'll typically do is I'll clamp this in my baby vise or the big vise over there. And I'll ram it in there until it's flush. You'll see a shoulder inside of this fitting. And you want it to be flush, as flush with those threads as possible up against them. 
and then put a little bit of oil on this wd-40 penetrating oil anything well not penetrating oil i use cutting oil right now because i don't have wd-40 and you just ram this guy on there until it's home so you can't turn it no more and you do the same thing on the other side and if this ends up being too long like what i've been running into with those two rear lines you can take it apart cut a little bit off reuse them these are reusable <clears throat> it's just a compression fitting basically so i'm gonna get that guy made make sure it's the right length on the car and that'll be done all right so there's that's on there all the way and we'll see if we can get a good view of this inside of course not up there you can see it oh and then it lost our focus anyways you can see the hose actually inside of there pressed up against there so now what we'll do we're gonna grab our straight piece and we're gonna clamp it on this small ferrule just like that and we'll take a little bit of this Make sure we actually hit the fitting. And then all we're going to do is push it on there. And I always get it started by hand. I keep pushing on the hose to make sure it actually gets connected into that barb just right. And it's the same way when I actually put the line in the fitting on this coupler piece here in the front. Is I always work in the way of the tape, how I rolled the tape on. So I put the tape on in a wrapping and uh i'll counterclockwise motion so i'll screw the fitting on in that same fashion so it doesn't try to unwind the tape it pulls it down tighter so that way it doesn't break inside of the fitting so now we'll get this on there a little bit further and we'll grab our earl's wrench there which by the way these are these earl's adjustable wrenches are a godsend so uh we'll get this guy done we'll get the other end on it and we'll show you once we're done and when you're done you have your nice a in line here, we'll come out here to the car. Let's see, that guy. Oh shoot, I can't remember how this went now. And just like that, everything's plumbed up. This is the only thing I don't like is how tight these ended up being, but I couldn't find a better way to do them. I'll bend this guy down just a little bit further. But uh, yeah, there's that side. And that side. <clears throat> okay. So we had a little mix up with the fitting that actually goes here because this is currently a dash 10 which is enormous and these were all eight which is also enormous you don't need half inch line going to your carburetors really under any circumstance really in all reality so we necked all these down to dash six on the actual regulator well oh, dash 10 o-ring to dash 10 an regular line so we're waiting on this fitting so we can plumb that with a 90 down and get that out underneath the car to a aluminum or copper nickel line back to the back they can start working on the fittings back there which i can go ahead and do and we'll just meet everything in the middle so <clears throat> got our caps on it up there we'll make a vent somewhere but uh this will go straight down and we got the pro stock back home because it's going to get ready to have the heads taken off go to the machine shop get them fixed so that, that engine can stay together permanently hopefully preferably and, uh, but we're going to take the holly blue pump off of it, put it with the Barracuda, and we're going to put a holly red on the Pro Stock because it really don't need the blue. And we'll mount all that. We'll either mount the pump up in here or we'll mount underneath the car with our filters and all that stuff. That's a little different task. Um, my OCD nature, I like all this in here. We got the helmet hook put on because that is a necessity. Not a race car without a helmet hook. One thing I don't like, though, is looking at it from this angle, you see all the gauge backs and everything. So I want to build me a finish panel that I can weld to this aluminum panel where all the gauges are. Just so you don't see just the gauge backs. And also it'll keep the sun off the wires and the little lines and everything coming off it. So we're going to pull that back out, get all that done. And uh, fuel lines still look good. Look at that. Check this out. It doesn't hit. Now yeah, we're going to have to oil that again. Dang it. Anyways, so... When I get to making that little deal, you guys don't need to watch me do that. I'll just show you once we're done. Oh, alrighty, well, I'll give you an update. The pro stock is back home finally at Jesse's little party. I think I hung out at his place for a better part of a month. So, sorry, Jesse. It's just kind of how things go. Uh, don't mind my Jess Bopar Joe hair. It's been windy today. You couldn't tell. Um, I got my little panel I made drying, but Dad brought me home these. We're going to throw these away at work. These little deals and I was trying to figure out how I was gonna mount it well that might be perfect we'll clamp it right onto there and we'll zap it in there all right welcome back guys and gals uh, another day another day in paradise I should say 
I know, and I always start out these new clips like this. I need to figure out some better things to say. Anyways, last night, <clears throat> Dad and I stayed out here in the dark, and we got everything mounted how we wanted it. So this is literally my eye level, what we're looking at. So I don't, my OCD is going to kill me with this, but it's how it's going to be. We didn't like the idea of mounting, we were going to mount the tack, you know, I was going to build a riser and stand it up three inches, but we didn't like the way that was going to look. So we just said, screw it. Let's mount it firmly down to this plate. This has got a single hose clamp. We'll do some more stuff to secure this on. Just a little bit loose right, right there on that side. But you can see the RPM that we need to see for the tack. You can see the two gauges that are important. And if you want to see the volt gauge, you lean down a little bit. Or you lean that way. So, and of course the hula girl. We're going to make sure she's mounted good and solid because she is crucial. And she's also terrifying. Look at those eyes. Like doll's eyes. All soulless. So, what I need to do now is I'm going to take this plate off. Dad brought me that from work. I'm going to clean that up, paint that black. I'm going to paint my gauge pod black. And then uh, we'll get all this mounted secured. And gauge will be done. We just got to plumb them all to everything they need to go to. We have a switch panel coming. Just went ahead and decided to screw it. We'll buy something instead of trying to make something. Priced out all the toggle switches, the lights, everything fuses. <coughs> it was cheaper to buy something, so that should be here a couple days. But right now, let's go this stuff off and paint it black so that way it looks a little more kosher. Alrighty, fellers and non fellers, so we are working on the Barracuda as always, again, as usual. What are you doing, dude? I'm trying to figure out how to cut a hole in that perfectly good hood. You mean that perfectly good hood that Ann and I per made the most perfect holes that are not slotted in the slightest? Perfectly round. Precision machine. You want to use an air hammer and a sheet metal shear? I was thinking a torch that's not set up right and it just spatters and spiggers. I got a number three tip. Let's do that. A little about a half inch curve. Yeah, just go ahead, you know, uh, I'm thinking, you know, for the blower, we need a whole, you know, clearance. Plenty of clearance. I'm thinking, you know. That would make it kind of easy for the one. Yeah, I think just that big old oval I just drew in the dirt. And then we'll have to come back and we'll have to, you know, we'll have to add that piece. We got where the blower snout goes. And we'll then we'll have to come back and we'll have to, you know, give a little extra bulb there. And in reality, these will probably be more like this shaped. It doesn't pick up on camera, thank God. Anybody knows my sense of humor, they know what I just drew. So, the other day we got the gauges all mounted up temporarily. I mean, they're permanent, but temporary. So, just got to wire everything up. We're waiting on a switch panel. Went ahead and mocked up the shifter where it's comfortable. Funnily enough, got that shifter from Terry Myers on Facebook. Thank you, Terry. And uh, there's already holes perfectly aligned for that drilled in the floor. So, that was probably one of the shifters that was in the car. We got the radiator test fitted. It's danger close, but that's just the way it is. Um, we might lower it down a little bit. We're going to beat down that support down there. But I looked and looked, couldn't find any radiators I liked that was thin that had dual driver side inlet and outlet. But yeah, we are chucking along. Dad's got the starter on. He did this. I got the shifter bracket and everything on to the transmission. Yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay. Keep cutting, Dad. Cut twice, measure once. That's my like Scott motto is cut as many times as it takes, and that includes, you know, odd numbers and whatnots. Like we even get into plan X, Y, and Z when it comes down to cutting holes. You can see Dad has done his best to mark this out, whereas when Ann and I did hood pin holes, it was a little less scientific. Motor's offset, so I had to go off the center line of the hood and not because the hood's tapered too. Yeah. So you got a taper and you got an offset, and you want that little lower snout to be a little bit narrower. So, looks like we're gonna be able to get one of the uh, <laughs> we'll get one of the louvered sections. Looks like it. we'll put one of those in there. I'll stiffen up the hood a little bit. Yeah, 
All right, we'll keep going, Dad. I'm gonna make sure the shifter's working out pretty good. Oh no, the carnage. Oh no. Huh, oh, that's not so bad. Did a pretty dang good job there, Dad. First try. First, First try. try. We're gonna add an inch of metal back onto this side, and we're gonna take three quarters, we're gonna come up right to this lip and grab that. The linkage clears, easy peasy, but might just want a little bit of extra room. And then we're gonna cut out the structures down here and just they hang down too low. Is this sitting on the radiator or we're good? I cannot tell. But we're gonna keep working on this. We'll see how far we get. All righty, fellers. We got it. Oh. So instead of actually welding in, you know, just an inch strip of metal, Dad and I talked about it. I kind of wanted to get some of the factory louvered pieces inserts. So we're going to get a pair. We're going to do this one. It'll just bolt right in. Really no modification. This one. Oh, yeah. Catch my drift. So everybody on eBay, you have been warned because I'm coming for you. I'm going to find me a pair of those to cut up and fit on the Barely Cuda. That's a good cut, Dad. I did a good job on that. I'm going to come back to the shifter. I was reading the instructions for B&M. They say do not bend those mounting tabs down. Whoops. <laughs> Who cares? That radiator's sitting in there. It appears it's going to clear. I was kind of nervous about that. I don't like how close it is to the blower belts, but there's nothing we can really do about that. I looked at a bunch of different radiators on Jags and Summit and even Speedway, and I didn't find nothing I liked. That was kind of right dimensions, right inlet and outlet. So, I mean, there's a shifter. There's a whole gauge set. There's a freaking hula girl. There's a god dang hood on this thing. It's got a starter on it, which we which didn't wire. show. It's got a shifter and a cable. We've got half of a automatic transmission line. Just got to plumb those. Don't trip, don't bend them. I missed. I did have to actually I did actually have to bend one out of the way for the cable. It was like right in place where the cable wanted to live. Oh, you ain't got more than one or two kinks in it. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. It didn't take much. But that's gonna conclude our adventures in this episode with the Barely Cuda. Because it looks majestic. It looks glorious. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. As always, when we will actually probably get wiring and plumbing done and hear this thing crank, and then maybe after that. Maybe I'll have the rear suspension video done that I started like three months ago. Or when are we first started doing that? It's been forever. So, that'll be fun. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Yeah, what do you got to say? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.